Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I am Eldridge Spig and I'm going to try to make this concise and straight to the point. But I just wanted to make a little bit of a video here to just provide some insight and just bring some concerns to the table in regards to Overwatch 2 that I just sort of been gathering from all the content that I've been watching in regards to streamers, things that have been released or information that has been released about certain reworks, the information about Sojourn and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to bring this to the table and sort of like dissect the information I've gathered so far and try to break, just basically realize whether my concerns are legitimate or they're actually concerns that are just sort of being brought towards me because I want this to succeed and because I want it to succeed so badly, I might be putting some insanely high expectations onto this. So the first point I wanted to address is to me, Sojourn felt rushed. Why? Because if you look at her gun, it looks kind of like Winston's gun, just not as wide and just, you know, slightly smaller in a way because it is meant to be a sort of like an SMG. But it does feel to me at least a little bit basic. I don't think it's something unique and insane like the majority of the other heroes have had until this point uh, or up to this point. Then another thing is the basic outfit. I think her outfit is incredibly basic, which could be changed by skins. So that one is kind of on the limelight there. I don't know if it's going to be changed, if it's going to be improved, if the new outfits or if the skins that are going to be brought to the game in the future are going to make her outfit look super awesome and her look in general be super awesome. But the default outfit, the default look of the character feels very, very basic to me, which I think it's not a typical Blizzard image, the typical Blizzard fashion, if you will, because Blizzard is known for polishing and making insanely good, unique designs. And it, I don't know, Sojourn just, her lore feels really cool, but like her outfit just feels incredibly basic and so like non-unique, you know what I mean? And then the abilities as well, which I'm hopeful that it's possibly a temporary visual for her abilities. But at least, I think all the other abilities were kind of okay, but at least the E ability, I believe, that the slowdown and stuff, felt like it was just a green graviton search. And that's not good. If we're recycling abilities or if we are recycling the ability visuals, I don't think that's a good look. I don't think that's very good at all. You know, it's usually a bad sign. So keep that in mind. Let me know in the comments whether you think that's uh, something okay, whether you think they're just busy with something else, you think it's possibly a temporary design, or if it's going to be changed, if it's not going to be changed, let me know what you think. The other one is that the changes for Orisa and Doomfist might appear to be really cool and really good now because it's a fresh change to a character that is known, at least for Orisa, a character to be known to be just a character for sleeping on a job. You throw your shield down, you shoot your pallets at people, uh, you try to boop them or whatever, and that's all you do with Orisa. And you can just sort of like snooze as you're playing the game when you're playing that character. But even though those changes might feel like they're really good changes and they might feel like a really fresh take on the newer characters and stuff, it might also be boring after a short period of time playing. After a week, two weeks, maybe a month, two months, if the character is still boring then it's not that much of a change now, is it? Again, hopeful. I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm wrong. I'm not hoping to be right on this one. Sometimes we want to be wrong. And I hope with this video 
that I'm wrong about almost everything. Doomfist appears to be the same shit, but it has almost 500 HP now, or 500 HP, and correct me if I'm wrong, it just felt like the same thing. Uh, everything I've been seeing in regards to Doomfist, it seems like he still has the insanely powerful punch. Uh, it feels like he still has the, both the uppercut and the, the slam or whatever. And it just doesn't feel like much of a change to me. Maybe the damage is different. Maybe the one shot ability has been taken from the game. But I, you know, I mean, if you can almost one shot, if you can have a succession of three abilities and almost one shot an enemy, and you have the same ability that you used to have with Doomfist as a tank as you did with da uh, damage Doomfist, I don't think that's very good. Because now it's just a way more difficult to kill character and still ridiculously overpowered. I don't know what kind of Kush Blizzard has been, uh, you know, ingesting, but I'd like some, please. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, I just feel like it's insanely overpowered. Now, another one that I wanted to talk about, and this is the last one, but... As a Blizzard game, I think people will probably have insanely high expectations because they are known for delivering really, really, really good games. Do you think they will be able to deliver on these expectations for Overwatch 2? We have to remember that it's been, what, two, almost three years of nothing new the only thing the game has had has been boring events to get skins that no one really cares about some people care but you know in generalizing no one really cares about it the same recycled events which is again if you consider the sojourn recycled visuals for the abilities it's concerning because we don't want things recycled, we want new content, we want things that we can explore again and feel, f you know, have feeling fresh for us while we're still playing the same IP we love. We don't want it to be continuing the same things over and over and over and over again. I'm not gonna lie, uh, when Jenkinstein's Revenge came out last year, I played it again, but it's purely to essentially go for the loot box or to just go for a challenge you didn't go for the other years or something like that. But it's not like a, a crazy exciting experience as it is the first time when you see the cinematics and you're excited about the cinematics and you just feel this, like your heart just beats a little bit faster because you're you're seeing something new and you're you're excited, you're... Your eyes are glaring and everything, you know what I mean? So, this is a Blizzard game. And we want something good. We want something that will justify this long, long, long wait. Now, my question is, will people be blinded by the fact that they've been waiting for so long? When I say they, I mean we, that we've been waiting for so long and we're, we'll be blinded uh, to the mistakes and to the, I guess, issues of the game? Or do you think we'll be still carrying those high expectations and if they mess up, we will move on? Because I honestly think that if they can't deliver on some... Like, I'm not even going to be like saying insanely high expectations, but I'm going to say... If they can't really deliver on these expectations, on my expectations, which are typically always low, but if they can't deliver even on those, I might as well move on and go make some other game my main game because I have been playing and suffering through Overwatch since 2016. It's been my main game. I love how fast it is. I love how satisfying it can be when it feels good when you have a team playing properly with each other and it really makes me mad when it's the opposite <laughs> you know what i mean and 
honestly, it's not one of the most toxic communities out there. Um, as some people might believe, as some people might portray it as, it really isn't. The, there is people who are really bad players and tend to just sort of carry their frustration of playing badly and they tend to be very toxic, but I have experienced very little legitimate toxicity. Like, there was one situation in Overwatch that I can't forget about. Like, this dude was literally, like, out of, like, it's probably the worst person I ever encountered in my life uh, playing Overwatch, or playing any game, really. Like, the things they said and the things they were just, like, going for, it's insane. They got banned or they got suspended or something, but really, 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 like, over the top. But besides that, I've never really encountered someone who was, like, so full of hatred within them that they were just, like, you know, letting themselves, like, blast all this blasphemy onto others and stuff. It's toxic. It's a multiplayer game. It's going to have toxicity. You got to understand that. You know what I mean? People get frustrated and they will sort of project their issues onto the game and their deep-rooted issues as well. They, they will be carrying or they will be carrying those onto those that feel like they're sort of a rock on their path and that's just how it goes but any multiplayer game is like that but honestly i can tell you like i feel like dead by daylight's community is worse because there's nothing at stake usually and it's just usually just literal pure frustration out of not being able to bully other people so you know i do think this community is pretty cool in comparison to a lot of others and hopefully Overwatch 2 will make uh, the community even better. Hopefully this game will be fantastic. I made this video to bring these concerns onto the table, not to say that I hope this is something that happens. And let me know in the comments if you think this is something that might happen, if you think this is something that is uh, very much so a possibility. Let me know if you think ERISA changes will be a really good thing for the future. Uh, even after like two, three months later, you let me know if you think Doomfist is different. Like, let me know what exactly has changed for Doomfist, because I'm not sure. I could probably go research it and figure out by myself, but I'm honestly not um, that interested because I never really liked Doomfist as a hero. Um, not the kit. I don't have anything against the hero himself. I just don't like the kit. I think it has too much mobility, it has too much damage, and it's just ridiculous. A, a character being able to one-shot others, it's insane. And Roadhog has always been under scrutiny for this situation, and, you know, I feel oppressed as a Roadhog main, and I have to, you know, basically go against something else. <laughs> so... Yeah, again, let me know your opinions down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Do you, are you really hopeful for the game to be good? Do you also have some of these concerns? Let me know. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you want more content like this, which I think this is probably like the first video I've made uh, like this, but I'm thinking about doing more of this stuff. So yeah, subscribe. Share it with your friends if you think it's worth it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a fantastic week. Have a fantastic day. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.